welcome back to Blow Harvest Vintage Toys. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you all about the vintage Star Wars collector cases. One of the true icons of vintage Kenner toy line is the Darth Vader's collector case. It was already iconic when we were kids, and it is still today. Even though it was really an uh, ambiguous toy in the 80s. Besides the Darth Vader's case, Kenner did release several other items meant for carrying our action figures around or for stocking them safely away when it was asked to clean up our room. So as I said, this video is all about the Star Wars collector cases. The Darth Vader collector case is a prime example of Kenner's collector's cases. It was first sold in 1980 in a brown mailer box through catalogue retailers. After its initial run, it was released multiple times until 1983 and was sold with cardboard wrapped around Vader's shoulders that showed the available figures, just like the action figure cards. And in 1983, it was, of course, released on Return of the Jedi packaging. Some rarer variations included three Kenner action figures. When opened, the Vader case shows two large holding areas for figures. It can hold up to 31 figures, and that odd number is explained by a special compartment meant to stock the weapons and accessories for your figures. Some places inside the case were suitable for taller figures, IG-88, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, and others for smaller figures like Atto-D2, R5-D4, an Ugnaught, or a Jawa. The Vader case also came with a slim full colour insert that showed a photo of all 31 figures that could be placed in the case. Stickers of the names of the figures had to be attached to the rightful spot where your toys could take a break from the adventures in Kenner's galaxy far, far away. It's not uncommon to find Vader's cases where the stickers are stuck in completely different order than proposed by Kenner. Vader did have his issues, and certainly as the collector's case. The inserted figures didn't only make a wibbly-wobbly sound when every step was stuck. Some figures got loose from the spots during transportation. The Vader collector's case may have been one of the best distributed and sold items by Kenner. And not just in the United States, it was a very common item that every kid around the corner seemed to have. It may still be very common in loose condition today, but it remains an icon of a generation and one that still might emanate a lot of memories for long times gone. And it also should be noted that during the early 90s, toy producer Just Toys issued a carrying case for the line of bendable rubber figures. It too was fashioned after Darth Vader's bust and thus it resembled the vintage Kenner piece to a high degree. The C-3PO collector's case was probably meant to be the successor of the Vader's collector's case. This case, covered with metalised gold, can hold up to 40 figures instead of 31, and was released for the first time in 1983. Kenner must have thought to release it as well in the droids line, but since that line was unfortunately discontinued pretty soon, the droids case only existed as a prototype. C-3PO was also packed with a cardboard around him, showing the 65 available Kenner figures. This case is bigger than Vader, and it also has some sculpting on its back. Vader was flat on the backside. When you open the head of the Cybot Galactica's most famous protocol droid, you will find it similar to the Vader case. It came with the slim cardboard insert, with a double-sided photo of all the figures to be placed inside the collector's case. It even showed the prototypes of the Jedi figures. The FPO case was even less an actual collector's case than Vader's. The figures weren't really strapped very tightly into the proper places and they got loose very easily. The C-3PO case is more scarce than the uh, Darth Vader one and although it's rather non-functional it remains a beautiful rendition of our beloved Goldenrod. The first carry case for the Star Wars Kenner figures that was released wasn't Vader but rather the Star Wars mini action figure collector case from 1979. Final carry toy cases were a common item in the 70s and 80s. Matchbox released them and so did Kenner. The vinyl case would hold 24 different figures, while at the time there was only 20. Boba Fett would be released soon. The case came with two plastic trays that would each hold 12 action figures. These trays could be reverted and used as a playground. They even had pegs to position the figures. It also included an insert that showed the figures that were intended to be carried around in this particular case and also a sticker sheet with the names of the available figures. A prototype of the rocket firing Boba Fett figure can be seen in the insert on the first release but that was replaced soon with a photo of the actual figure. 
Compared to Vader and the 3PO, the Vinyl Case don't have a proper compartment for your weapons, but they're able to hold the figures much better. They truly are usable carry cases, and in mint condition, they also have a sticker on the backside. The most remarkable thing about the vinyl cases is without doubt their original artwork. The Star Wars case has artwork that shows 18 of the 21 figures. Snaggletooth, Luke X-Wing Pilot and Boba Fett are featured however. The artwork used photographs and stills from the movie as examples. You can notice how R2-D2, C-3PO and the Tusken Raider, the Jawa and the Death Squad Commander have been based on photos from the movie. Note that the Death Star has been turned upside down and that Greedo is wearing the same funky green Martian like outfit like his action figure does. The Star Wars logo is prominent, including the Luke Leia emblem. The same vinyl case was re-released in 1980, but with the Star Wars logo got replaced by the logo from the Empire Strikes Back, Episode 5 wouldn't have to worry, because it would receive two vinyl cases of its own. The first final case from episode 5 was released in 1981. By that time, the popular Vader case had also been released, but still can I believe that a smaller, cheaper case would sell. Consequently, the vinyl cases that were released after 1979 are more difficult to secure. This case had the same accessories than the first one did, two plastic trays, now in tan colour, that could hold 24 figures, and an insert that shows all available 41 figures. The artwork is beautiful, colourful, and maybe a bit eclectic. It prominently features Yoda, and going clockwise you can see Cloud City with Slave 1 and Cloud Car, Lobot, Lando Corrigan and Ugnaught, Bestman Guard, Leia Organa with Purple Garment. The four bounty hunters had already been made as figures, Bosk, Boba Fett, IG-88 in Dengar, Luke on his Tauntaun, and the X-Wing on Dagobah. More in the centre of the artwork are an attack driver, an attack walker, Luke, Jewel Invader, and two medical droids, FX-7 and 2-1-B, and a Hoth turret. As you can see, the artist succeeded in adding a lot of new Kenner figures and toys on the cover of the vinyl case. The following year, 1982, Kenner decided to release yet another vinyl case from episode 5 with updated artwork. It once again included two trays and an insert of the figures. The artwork in the vinyl case was a bit more coherent than the previous one and it once again manages to show a lot of the newest kind of toys. You can see a rebel transport lifting off, Han Solo rescuing Luke, a probot, a Wampa, Cloud City with Chewbacca carrying C-3PO and a security guard. The twin port car, car Han and Carbonite, Luke fighting Vader, Han and Leia, the Falcon, Snowtroopers and the tripod laser cannon, a minuscule scout walker, the Atat Commander Veers, and a scene from Dagobah with, with Yoda, Luke, R2 and Obi-Wan. The cases from Episode 5 were sometimes mixed up. Remember that the second one features the Wampa and the first one doesn't. The Return of the Jedi vinyl case was released in 1983, but didn't have the long lifespan. Despite its awesome artwork, Kenner soon released their C-3PO collector case, and the multitude of other vinyl cases probably meant that this one had fairly limited release. A lot of the artwork is reminiscent of the actual Kenner toys. On the right side we see Vader and Luke dueling aboard the Death Star, a Y-Wing Starfighter C-3PO with Chirper and Logre, a Rebel Commando, other Rebel Commandos guarding the bunker, and a Scout Trooper on a speeder bike. That's based on the Kenner toy and not the actual model from the movie. The left side is dominated by Jabba the Hutt and his minions. We see the skiff with the heroes, including Weeke and Klaatu, who are even shown twice. As is Lando Skiffguard disguise, in Jabba's throne room we see a Gamorrean, Bush, Bib Fortuna and Squidhead. Jabba himself is accompanied by Silicius Crumb. This case also came with a double-sided insert with the red plastic trays for stocking the figures. The artwork for the vinyl cases was done by artists who weren't employees of Kenner and therefore no sign of the artist's signature can be found. If you want to check out the progress of the artwork in the cases, check out Gus and Duncan's guide to Star Wars prototypes. The artwork of the cases is also used for magnets released on Celebration 6 and Celebration Europe 2. It seemed that Kenner couldn't get enough of the idea of collector cases. The Chewbacca bandolier strap from 1983 was an idea that worked on paper, but it was incredibly impractical to, in reality. Kenner probably didn't consider it a genuine collector's case, but more of a roleplay item. 
The toy is a reproduction of the ammo bandolier used by Chewbacca in all the movies and it has 10 foam slots for storing action figures and 2 plastic cases for weapons and accessories. It didn't look bad at all as a kid, you could never actually wear it. But transporting the figures like this in the open was nothing any kid would do. The foam wasn't really that strong so it wasn't safe to carry your figures around like that. The bandolier was sold in a box and showed a kid wearing the item, but it was also available in a mailbox if you saved enough proofs of purchase. It was advertised heavily on the back of the action figure cards, together with the C-3PO clips case. Nowadays, most of the loose bandoliers are suffering from a deteriorating form. The last case Kenner released was a laser rifle carry case in 1984. It looks like a large blaster rifle and is a scope that you can look through. But Kenner didn't really exaggerate its features while promoting it. The laser rifle wasn't really seen in Return of the Jedi, nor was it able to carry secret messages. It held less figures than the vinyl cases, but since it had been found in catalogues sporting the power of the Force logo, Kenner was planning to sell it beyond 1984 if their line had continued. Kenner didn't mind the fact that it could only hold 19 figures and their weapons in a special compartment since they had also considered it to be a roleplay item. The laser rifle was packed in cardboard that showed several mini rigs, some features of the item and available action figures. Though the Rebel Transport is naturally considered a ship from Kenner's range of toys, but it could also hold up to 24 figures in its cargo hold. The ship was released in 1982 and came with a large plastic cargo hold divided by many box-like compartments, the hat pegs for your figures, and an escape hatch for your imprisoned characters. The command pod of the transport could be used as a handle to carry the ship around. This was Kenner's perfect match between an actual toy and a functional collector's case. I have always said it's a collector's case. Hasbro has reused the vintage moulds of the Vader and the C-3PO collector's cases for the modern line of action figures. So beware when you encounter any of these in loose condition. Unless you pretend that your heroes and villains encountered massive statues of Darth Vader or C-3PO, you probably didn't play a lot with the collector's cases. But they had their proper place in the collection. Even if you didn't use them to store your figures, some of them had very cool artwork and others had nice compartments to stock your weapons and accessories. Today most of the cases will probably be excused from doing what they were originally meant to do. But the collector's cases remain original niche items in Kenner's vintage toy line. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that little run through of the vintage Star Wars collector cases. I had been asked by a viewer to do the Darth Vader case, so I thought I'd just do them all. I do want to get back into doing more vintage items. But if you've got any items you want me to talk about, let me know. Next up, I'm going to be talking about vintage play sets, not just Star Wars, all of them. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe, click that bell icon so you know when there's a new video or when we're live streaming. So stick around and watch another one of my videos. The playlist will be coming up anytime soon. But until the next video, play out the toy box and may the toys be with you. It's the Potato Head. This famous spud was the first toy to be advertised on television. From 1952 to 1963, parents had to provide their kids with actual potatoes to use as Mr. Potato Head's body. Hasbro began manufacturing the plastic potato body that currently comes with the box in 1964.